Opening slide graphic text title, Advancing Inclusive Education in Australian Schools with Lauren Swancutt. Image of Lauren Swancutt, text, Purpose Matters Conference, logos, belonging matters and talks that matter, .net. Hi everyone, thank you for the lovely introduction. It's so good to be part of this Purpose Matters conference and I'm sorry that I can't be there live with you all today as I've been called away with work commitments in regional Queensland. As we get started, I would like to acknowledge the First Nations owners of the lands where we all meet from today. From where I am here in Townsville, that is the Wulkarooka and Bindal people. And I pay our respects to their elders, laws, customs and creation spirits. I would also like to acknowledge any First Nations people who are joining us for this presentation. When we consider inclusive education, it is important to connect with and understand the historical factors and contributions that have led to its development and prominence across the educational landscape. To do this, we can look back to the birth of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which occurred post-World War II in 1948. The establishment of this first human rights legal framework led the way for future human rights conventions that have been influential in the space of inclusive education. The human rights movement in combination with the 1954 high profile Brown versus Board of Education civil rights ruling in the US that determined separate is inherently unequal for African American children, paved the way for a subsequent class action concerning children with disability. In 1971, claimants in the Park versus the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania case successfully argued that the segregation of children with intellectual disability into separate special schools and institutions was in fact in violation of the Brown versus Board of Education ruling. This ruling went on to influence the passing of US federal law that states all children in the US are entitled to a free and appropriate education in the least restrictive environment. Following these class actions, a series of prominent reports and declarations focused on education provision for students with disability occurred across the US and the UK in the 1970s and 80s. The concept of inclusive education then became internationally recognised in 1994 through the Salamanca Statement and Framework on Special Needs Education. In 2006, the Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disability was adopted by the United Nations and has since been ratified by 185 countries, including Australia. The CRPD urges signatories to support the implementation of inclusive education. And to support this, in 2016, the Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disability convened to produce the most recent international advancement relating to inclusive education in the form of General Comment Number 4. General Comment Number 4 was constructed to clearly define inclusive education. This history of inclusive education emphasises that it is not a passing fad or idea or the opinion of a few but a type of education that is deeply rooted in social justice and the desegregation of people with disability. As mentioned, General Comment 4 defines inclusive education as, and I quote, a process of systemic reform embodying changes and modifications in content, teaching methods, approaches, structures, and strategies in education to overcome barriers with a vision serving to provide all students of relevant age range with an equitable and participatory learning experience. Importantly, General Comment 4 also defines provisions that are incompatible with inclusive education, being exclusion, which occurs when students are directly or indirectly prevented from accessing education, segregation, which occurs when education is provided to students in separate environments, and integration, which occurs when students are placed in existing mainstream classes with the responsibility of adaptation being placed on the student. It is important to note this last distinction as it is still commonplace to hear the terms mainstream and inclusion being used interchangeably, particularly in the media and on social media posts. These terms are actually incompatible and general comment number four informs us that the placement of students in the current mainstream system without appropriate transformation to content, teaching methods, approaches, structures, and strategies is in fact integration at best. And integration is not what we're after. Inclusive education is not only about access, but about genuine transformation of beliefs, attitudes, and practices 
that result in equal opportunities to participate and learn alongside peers without hardship. The Queensland University of Technology have produced some resources regarding the definition of inclusive education and the essential knowledge associated with it. These exist as a short video, which highlights the differences between exclusion, segregation, integration, and inclusion, and a short course that details the essential knowledge for achieving inclusive education success. Both of these resources are hyperlinked in the slides handout, and you may wish to engage with those at a later time. The benefits of inclusive education for students with disability have been well researched for many decades. There is a substantial amount of research evidence that demonstrates when students with disability experience inclusive education, they make significant progress academically and socially. Students with disability who access inclusive education are more likely to graduate high school and participate in post-school education and employment. The positive impacts of inclusive education transfer long-term and result in greater independence and increased social and economic participation post-school. Students without disability also benefit from inclusive education, experiencing consistent or improved academic outcomes and a range of social and personal benefits, such as greater acceptance for diversity and being confident in communicating with and socialising with people with disability. The positive outcomes of inclusive education also extend to students with significant disabilities or who we will refer to as having complex learning profiles. Research continues to show that even for students requiring the most extensive supports, still benefit from inclusive education. Although inclusive education is beneficial for all students and it results in the most productive form of education and outcome for students with disability, segregation in the form of special schools or schools for specific purpose, special education units and special classes designed to congregate students with disabilities or particular types of disability continue to be widespread across Australian education systems. The continued segregation of students in part rests on perceptions that some students cannot learn in and or benefit from access and participation in regular education classrooms. Such perceptions are rooted in societal prejudice said to be linked to the false binary of the productive non-productive citizen, which centres on people with disability being perceived as deficient or deviating from the norm. It frames people with disability, particularly those with significant cognitive disabilities, as inferior and bereft of social, educational and economic capacities. These preconceived positions are compounded by the alleged benefits of segregated education provision that are still so commonly purported by those vested in segregated education systems. Despite the evidence, these people believe that statistical norms and competitive school structures are neutral, fair and expected, and that disabilities are innate conditions that are best served and remediated in specialist settings. Additional arguments for educating students with disabilities in segregated settings centre on the capacity of inclusive education to genuinely support students to make progress due to fiscal and professional constraints. It's believed that the need for intense levels of services legitimately require more restrictive program features, such as alternate educational placement, in order to be implemented efficiently and effectively. And this is responded to with parallel resourcing and structures that emphasise this message across our systems. However, we know that many classrooms, schools and districts or regions around the world have been able to overcome these common barriers and do provide education in a way that genuinely upholds the values and practices of inclusive education. In doing so, they are providing meaningful opportunities for students to learn alongside peers in regular classrooms, accessing the regular curriculum. In Australia, the regular curriculum is considered the Australian curriculum. There are also state-based iterations of this curriculum, like those in New South Wales and Victoria. The Australian curriculum is intended to be a world-class national curriculum centred on quality and equity for all young Australians, including students with disability. Central to this initiative is the belief that all students can learn when provided with high quality and rigorous curriculum provision. Equity of access to the Australian curriculum is achieved through the standards-based design and the three-dimensional architecture that encompasses the learning areas or subjects, general capabilities and cross-curriculum priorities. 
The Australian curriculum describes a continuum of learning that makes clear to teachers what is to be taught across the years of schooling. This learning continuum encourages the support of student diversity by stipulating what should be learnt and the quality of learning to be expected, whilst providing flexibility for teachers to account for different rates and ways in which students progress. Where necessary, personalisation and adjustment to the teaching and learning process are encouraged to occur by drawing from learning area content at different levels along the foundation to year 10 sequence, using the general capabilities and or cross-curricular priorities to adjust the learning focus and aligning individual learning goals. When accessing age equivalent curriculum, students with disability can benefit from reasonable adjustments that enable them to learn the identified knowledge and skills in equitable ways. In Australia, the provision of adjustments is legislated within the disability standards for education. In relation to curriculum, reasonable adjustments are required to ensure activities are sufficiently flexible and that content, teaching materials and assessment tasks are accessible by all students and are appropriate to each student's needs. Prior to making an adjustment, the standards stipulate that educators must consult the student or an associate of the student to determine whether an adjustment is necessary to ensure participation in a course or program and to use the facilities and services provided on the same basis as students without disability. Reasonable adjustments should also be the least intrusive and disruptive and most beneficial form of support for the student. Students with disability vary in the level, type and intensity of adjustments required. Recognition of this variance is represented in the nationally consistent collection of data on school students with disability, which is commonly referred to as the NCCD. The NCCD is designed to assess and capture the type and level of adjustments needed for students with disability to access and participate in education. In relation to curriculum, quality differentiated teaching practice is understood as the provision of routine practices that occur through usual teaching and learning processes. In addition to quality differentiated teaching practice for all students, some students may also access tiers of adjustment that extend from this. These include supplementary, substantial and extensive adjustments. Supplementary curriculum adjustments are supports required at specific and intermittent times and are utilised to enhance an individual student's access and participation without altering the complexity of curriculum. Substantial curriculum adjustments are supports that are offered at most times to overcome significant barriers. They are provided to students who experience cognitive impacts that affect their ability to progress through curriculum complexities and amounts at the same rate as their non-disabled peers. Extensive curriculum adjustments are ongoing with sustained levels of intense support. They occur for a very small number of students who require ongoing intensive teaching that is highly individualised at all times. The provision of adjustments at the various levels of intensity and frequency can be implemented together through the application of frameworks such as universal design for learning, differentiated instruction, and through the use of high impact teaching practices. In addition, for students with disability to thrive, they need to be taught in ways that genuinely support them to learn, form relationships and belong across all facets of schooling. There are a number of effective practices that when implemented support the realisation of genuine inclusive education over that of mainstreaming or integration. These practices include multi-tiered system of supports, which focuses on planning, implementing and monitoring the impact of supports across academics, wellbeing and behaviour to ensure all students receive proactive and effective access to supports and services within the school. Heterogeneous classrooms, which are environments in which students of all backgrounds and all attainment levels are educated together without ability grouping or streaming. Co-teaching, which is a collaborative teaching practice that involves two teachers working closely together to plan and provide universally designed instruction in a regular classroom. Effectively utilising teacher assistance to ensure support is provided in least intrusive ways within the classroom and allowing the teacher to form the main instructional provider for the student. 
peer supported learning, which involves peers providing natural supports, prompts and strategies to facilitate the access and participation of students in instructional tasks and social events. Cooperative learning, which involves students working together on common curriculum and tasks, leveraging the diverse knowledge, skills and perspectives of the collective group. Assistive technology, which exists in both high tech and low tech forms to scaffold and provide access and participation. And multidisciplinary collaboration, which involves classroom teachers working closely with broader school staff, allied health professionals and others to work together and share responsibility for understanding and responding to the educational needs of students. On this slide, you will see a series of hyperlinks, which are recordings of examples of successful inclusive education practices within Australian schools. There are a range of grade levels and topics captured within the videos, with each ranging from five to 20 minutes long, so quite easily accessible. I would highly encourage you to engage with these stories to further expand your understanding and to also see how inclusive education is being realised in Australian schools and classrooms. It's really important that we are able to imagine more or imagine beyond our own realm of context and what we are familiar with. When we engage with these examples, we see what is possible, which opens up our minds a little bit further to what inclusive education actually is and how it can be achieved and sustained. I hope you have enjoyed my presentation. Uh, I encourage you to engage in further professional learning around inclusive education, given that this is just a small little snapshot of what inclusive education is and how it is occurring in the Australian context. I also hope that you have enjoyed accessing the other speakers of today. It's certainly been a pleasure to be a part of this conference with you all, and I wish you all the best moving forward. Thanks so much. Bye for now. Closing slide graphic text with thanks to Lauren Swancott, Crowdcom's Purpose Matters Conference 2022. This video was made possible with the support of an information and capacity building grant through the Department of Social Services, produced by Belonging Matters. Belonging Matters makes every effort to provide accurate and up-to-date material. However, information is subject to change and our materials for reference only. This video was filmed on the land of the Rwandri Wurrung peoples of the Eastern Kulin Nation. Logos belonging matters talks that matter dot net. Graphic text. More Purpose Matters conference videos. To watch more videos from the Purpose Matters conference, please head to free videos on the Talks That Matter website. Talks that matter dot net. Logos belonging matters talks that matter.